हेलो स्टूडेंट आई एम डॉक्टर मित सी पटेल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट सिल्वर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट द बेजिक्स ऑफ स्टीम बॉयलर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ स्टीम बॉयलर सर्टेन क्राइटेरिया टू सिलेक्टिंग द बॉयलर सिलेक्शन क्राइटेरिया ऑफ द बॉयलर एंड वी डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द सिंपल वर्टिकल बॉयलर In today's lecture, we move further. Today we discuss about the mounting and accessories part. <coughs> what is mounting? What is accessory? What is the comparison between two types of mounting, types of accessories? And we discuss each in detail. So first we talk about the boiler mounting. Before we start the boiler mounting, first we need to discuss the difference between mounting and accessories. <coughs> Let's take one example. If I have a <coughs> car, if I have a car and we don't have a four wheels or one wheel in car, then car will run, not run. Second, I will give you example. If I have a car but the brake is not available in the car, then my car is run. My car is run, but the brake is compulsory part in the car automobile. Same like if I have a car but I don't have AC, I don't have a tap, I don't have a uh, 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 lights, LED lights in the car. But that 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 all three are the not the compulsory things inside the automobile or car. That means based on that, what I am going to say, if we are talking about the boiler mounting, that all the mountings are compulsory for the boiler. If we are not using the mountings in the boiler, then my boiler get damaged. And what about the boiler accessory? Accessory that means if we use the accessory inside the boiler, then what happened? My boiler looks good, and the efficiency of the boiler may increase. So these are these two main point for the mounting and accessory is most important. Compulsory things must be required for the boiler is called the mounting. and if we use the accessories then my boiler looks good my boiler efficiency will increase but it's not the compulsory accessory are the not compulsory mountings are the compulsory so first we talk about the boiler mountings then we move further in the next topic we discuss about the boiler accessories so boiler mounting are the fitting and devices which are necessary for efficient operation and safety <coughs> the devices are usually mounted over the boiler cell we already discussed when we talk about the in the previous lecture we talk about the vertical simple vertical boiler so these are the seven mountings first one is the water level indicator second one is the pressure gauge third one is the steam stock valve fourth one is the fit check valve fifth one is the boil of blow off cock sixth one is the fusible plug and seventh one is the safety valve so all seven mounting are necessary compulsory for the boiler operation and safety <clears throat> so first we discuss about the boiler boil water level indicator in the boiler so if you all know what is boiler boiler is a device which convert water into the steam part <clears throat> so there are two things one is the water and second is the hot flue gases using that hot flue gases water gets converted into the steam so what is water level indicator of the water level indicator indicates the water level available inside the boiler <coughs> that is called the water level indicator in the first figure you can see the it is a actual figure of the boiler actual figure of the boiler this is the Valve one, valve two. This is the glass tube, and it shows the current water level indicator. So here you can see these two are the. I will mark you. This valve one and valve two, both valve are closed. What happened when the valve are open? Then what happened? The water gets inside the glass tube, and here from the steam is got inside the glass tube. After certain times, it will get equilibrium, and it shows the. Water level inside this glass tube, so that we can consider the this much amount of water present in the boiler. It is compulsory 
we need to know how much water is present inside the boiler because if water is not available and we, we supply the heat energy to the boiler then what happens boiler gets overheated and after overheated it gets an explosion may occur that's why we have to know how much amount of water will present inside the boiler now function and the construction of the boiler just i go through it <coughs> if you have any kind of query i already i already explained the working and construction all this thing from the figure but just i go through the whole points if you have any kind of doubt you, you may uh, uh, contact me or you may ask the questions so what is the function it indicate the water available or water level inside the boiler already we discussed it shows the level in the boiler drum so what is the construction normally two water level indicator are fitted to the boiler we can we may use the two or three water level indicator so these are fitted at the front end of every boiler and water level indicator consists the three cogs as a steam cog water cog and drain cog we already discussed about the two steam and water cog there there is a one more cog that is called the drain cog and the glass tube so the steam cog connects to this connect disconnect the glass tube with steam space and water for the water cog it connect and disconnect the glass tube with water space available in the boiler so that what is the function of drain cog the drain cog is used to drain out the water in the form from the glass tube at interval to ensure that steam and water cog are clear in operation that is the use of the drain cog <clears throat> the glass tube is protected by means of a cover and made of specially specially so that the, when we uh, supply the steam from the steam cog then my glass tube will not damage it sustain the certain temperature now this is the working of water level indicator i simply go through this four to five points you can just read it so when the steam cog and water cog are open steam rushes from the upper passage and water rushes from the lower passage or to the glass tube this will indicate the level of the water in the boiler two ball are placed at the junction of the metal tubes <clears throat> under normal operation condition the boiler uh, the walls are kept full line circle is indicated the glass tube is broken then the ball is shifted from one to second place so steam will rush from upper passage and water from rush from the lower passage due to the pressure difference between the boiler pressure and the atmospheric pressure so the ball are the carrier along the passage to an end of glass tube and then it flows the passage so when the glass tube get broken out then the two balls are close the valve and the uh, steam run out outside the boiler is closed and same for the water gets run out of the outside the boiler is closed so this position of boil shown in figure by the dotted circle thus the flow of the steam out of the boiler is prevented when the glass tube is broken now we talk about the second mounting is called pressure gauge by default his name he indicate the function of him the pressure gauge it means it is a gauge which required to measure the pressure of steam inside the boiler how it indicate here you can see the two figure in the first figure we have used the c shape here you can see the c shape material that is called the burden tube that is called the burden tube in burden tube when the pressure gets come inside the burden tube it's get convert into the straight it get to straight become a straight so then where it go become a straight we connect the pointer and reckon pinion mechanism with the burden tube so the pointer move from the dial gauge if we remove the pressure from this tube burden tube then what happen it get uh, it get convert into the original shape and our pointer shows the zero now we discuss the function it indicate the pressure of the steam inside the boiler <coughs> then the construction the gauge is usually mounted on the front top of the cell or on the drum because we need to use this pressure gauge for the measuring the steam pressure and steam is available at the top of the drum 
so it is having the dial which graduated to read the pressure in bars above atmospheric pressure burden tube gauge with its interior mechanism we can use the burden tube it's called the burden tube pressure gauge so the, the circular band burden tube of oval cross section is closed at the one end and the second end is connected with the boiler uh, steam space or we can call as a steam of the uh, where the steam is available at the top of the cell so the siphon or we can call as a u tube is filled with the water which prevents a lot of hot of steam from the entering the pressure gauge and keeps the gauge cool otherwise what happened the temperature of the siphon or we can siphon tube is more so what happened the siphon tube will damage so close end of the burden tube is attached to the toothed quadrant with help of link and pinion we already discussed the rack uh, and pinion mechanism is connected with the burden tube so this quadrant matches with the small pinion on the central spindle what is the working so when the pressure is applied inside the oval burden tube the its cross section tends to become circular and free end will burden tube try to become a straight <coughs> so if they go for the straight path then what happens so turning the spindle by the link and gearing it will goes change the shape so this causes the needle to move and indicate the pressure on the dial gauge with the help of rack and pinion if we not use the pressure gauge we already discuss about the mounting are compulsory in the boiler so if we are not using the pressure gauge then we we will not get the value of the pressure in the boiler so if the range of the boiler gets uh, it to 12 bar or we can consider 50 to 60 bar and if the pressure is goes on 60 bar so what happened the pre pressure goes on the 60 bar so the boiler gets explode or we can call as a boiler get blast so we need to know each and every moment the what is the pressure generation is going on inside the boiler or inside the steam space now we talk about this steam stop valve what is the function of steam stop valve the function of steam stop valve is whatever steam is generated inside the boiler the using that steam stop valve is get transferred from boiler to the required machine or we required position where we require the steam so with the help of this hand wheel here you can see with the help of here uh, this hand wheel we rotate the hand wheel then that valve is goes up if the valve is goes up from this part it here is the boiler steam space then the steam get transfer from boiler to the required place and when we not required to transfer the steam then at that time we again rotate the hand wheel and that valve is closed after the valve is closed the not not amount no, zero amount of steam get transfer from boiler to outer where we required here you can see steam is get got transfer by this way you can see in this second figure now function of the steam stop valve is it regulates the flow of steam from boiler to the steam pipe or from one steam pipe to the another so what is the construction parts i just simply go through the point you have any kind of query you can message me you can contact me anytime i will help out the function of uh, is we already discussed it regulate the flow of steam so now we talk about the construction the common type of steam stop valve the flange of valve body bloated bloated on the boiler is what is the location of the steam stop valve it's located at the top of the boiler why is it the top of the boiler because its function is to regulate the flow of the steam so steam is available at the top of the boiler so we can uh, fit at the steam stop valve at the top of the boiler so it consists of the valve seat and nut the main body of valve is made of cast iron and valve seat made of gun metal because the steam temperature is more the steam is superheated steam that's why the temperature of superheated steam is more 
so we need to uh, made from that metal the the material will resist that high temperature so when the steam stop valve is placed directly over the boiler and connected to the steam pipe line is called the junction valve if it is placed near to the prime mover then normally is called the steam stop valve so the lower end of the spindle connected to the valve over and pass through the gland and yolk and connected with hand wheel and that hand gland is used to prevent the leakage of the steam why we are using the gland we are using the gland to remove the prevent the leakage leakage of the steam that's why we are using the gland now working of the steam stop valve the steam spindle is rotated by help of hand wheel due to the rotation of spindle the valve moves up and down we already discussed during we discuss about the figure just we go through the point if you have any kind of doubt you can contact me anytime you can message me or comment on this video i will surely help out when the valve sheet over the valve sheet the passage of the steam is completely closed and the steam passage may be partially or fully open by the movement of the valve of help the help out the rotating the hand wheel the clearance between the valve and valve sheet regulates the flow of steam out of the boiler if we require more steam we have to open the more valve if we require the less steam we have to open the less valve so in locomotive boiler the supply of the steam is regulated by means of regulator which is placed inside the boiler cell and operated by the handle from the diver's cabin now same we already discussed the steam stop valve now we discuss about the feed check valve so what is the function of feed check valve here you can see the actual figure of the feed check valve second and third one now we discuss what is the function of feed check valve so we are using the feed check valve to transfer water from the outer resources to the boiler into the boiler so here you can see same construction of steam stop valve here we place the hand wheel if we rotate the hand wheel the valve gets upward and if valve spindle gets upward the valve will remain open and the water from the outer source to uh, uh, transfer to inside the boiler if you not require the water uh, transfer from outer source to boiler then what we happen the we rotate the hand wheel the spindle goes down then the valve will close <coughs> here we are using the non retaining valve so that whatever amount of water gets inside the boiler from the outward that not return back to the outer source that's why we are using the non retaining valve this is the actual figure of the feed check valve now we discuss about the function and the construction so it controls the supply of water from the boiler when the feed pump pressure is less than the boiler pressure or pump is stop main function of the feed check valve is to transfer or we can call the supply the water from outward source to boiler so the feed check valve is fitted in boiler or in a water space of the boiler just below the normal level of the water if the normal level gets decreases then what happen automatically the feed check valve open and the water gets transfer from outward to outer source to boiler so it will we have to uh, we have to uh, convey the main thing is we have to maintain the minimum level or normal level inside the boiler otherwise it get goes the boiler into the explosion or overheated part so it consists the non retaining valve water inlet pipe outward pipe spindle gland and wheel what is the function of gland we are using the gland to remove or to prevent the leakages we are also using the steam in the gland in steam stop valve now we are using the gland in feed check valve as well so the outlet pipe of valve connected with and the delivery pipe of connected with the feed pump now simple working of the feed check valve is inlet and outlet pipe of valve 
expose different pressure at inlet valve of the feed pump pressure at and the outlet pipe of the valve the boiler pressure at when the feed pump is in operation the pressure of feed pump side inlet side is more than the pressure on the boiler side or we can call as the outward outlet side so this pressure difference lifts the non return valve and it allows the flow into the boiler from outside source to inside source or we can call the outward source to inward source that is the boiler now next one is called the blow off cock we discuss about the blow off cock what is the function of blow off cock blow off cock nothing but it is a very important part of the boiler if we have if we supply the water if we supply the uh, hot flue gases inside the boiler then what happen in the boiler certain uh, solid sediments or impurities uh, are or a clean we can call it as a clinker all these impurities are collected inside the boiler after certain time we need to clear that boiler then we use the blow off cock using that blow off cock we clean out the whole boiler so it connected with the outer boiler cell at the bottom place so here you can see this is the guard with with the which we rotate this is the sink yog this is the plug it in in this side it is a hollow in this side it is a solid so what happened if we rotate with the help of guard then what happened the hollow portion is comes in this side now it is con uh, the position of off position if we rotate this hand wheel then what happened hollow portion get rotated like this L right now this is in this position if we rotate the hand hand wheel then it's convert in it goes in this direction so the hollow portion is open this side so what have happened whatever impurities whatever sediments whatever solid particles are present inside the boiler that that transfer from this hollow portion into outside so here you can see if we rotate this wall this goes the hollow part then water goes this from this side to this side this is the actual figure of the blow off cock now what is the function of the blow off cock so the function of the blow off cock is to discharge the mud and other sediments deposited in the boiler part or bottom most part of the water space inside the boiler so why the boiler is in operation second one is the it is also used for the drain of the boiler water hence it is the mounted at the lowest part of the boiler we already discussed when it, it is open water under the pressure rush out and the, thus the carrying the sediments and impurities outside the boiler now the simple construction of the fusible plug or we can call as a blow off cock it is fitted on the boiler cell directly or through the short bench of pipe at the lowest part of the water space it consists of a gun metal conical plug having a rectangular hole and spindle with yoke as shown in figure the plug meshes accurately into the similar casing and the plug spindle is generally rotated by means of a spanner on the top of the yoke and two vertical slots are provided for fixing this spanner now we talk about the next and very most important mounting is fusible plug now what is the fusible plug it is a one kind of small plug which are required to say uh, for the safety of the boiler so what happened here you can see the figure in this figure this black part i will i will mark you so, so you can get understand very easily this black part is a one kind of made from the fusible matter and what is the fusible matter fusible matter that means at certain temperature it not get reacted it not get melted but after the range is increased from the that capacity then what happened that black part or that fusible metal gets melted and if this part two side part is melted 
then this part that is the called the solid hopper plug is uh, go inside the furnace drop inside the furnace and this portion is open when the this portion is open steam is rushed rushed out and the combustion will stop so what is the location of the fusible plug in the boiler this the fusible plug is located above the furnace the fusible plug is located above the furnace then no, the, the, this is the furnace here you can consider this is the furnace part this is the furnace part and what happened the uh, above the furnace outside you can consider the the water part so when the outside the water is available then the temperature of fusible metal goes low goes down so the fusible metal not melt get not melted if you can consider if we have a water and that all the waters get converted into the steam and we don't have the new raw water at this moment so what happen the whatever place will take place by the water now in above the water is the steam so if we don't have a water then what happens all the space are occupy the steam so the temperature of the water is low the temperature of the steam is high so when the steam then the water outside that fusible plug or fusible metal the temperature uh, maintain low then the, the fusible metal not get melted so now what happened the water goes converted into the steam now outward side all the space occupied by the steam and that steam temperature is high due to high temperature what happened the fusible metal is melted both the side the fusible metal is melted what happened the this plug is go inside the furnace and from the outside the steam gets rush into the furnace and what is the function of furnace in the furnace we are burning the fuel to produce the high, uh, high temperature high fuel gases so the combustion will stop and due to the combustion stop the generation of hot fuel gases are stop and due to the boiler not get in the burn out or we can consider not get the transfer into the explosion because the temperature goes reduced down by slowly now the function it is the used to protect the boiler against the damage due to the overheating caused by the low water level inside the boiler it is fitted on the firebox or we can consider the combustion chamber furnace over the combustion chamber furnace so the fusible plug consists of a two hollow guns and one conical plug is shown in figure a hollow gun metal body is screwed to the firebox or we can consider as a combustion chamber or furnace crown plate of the boiler so another hollow gun metal is screwed to the first body so third plug is made from copper is locked with second plug by pouring the metal into the grooves provided on the both the plug we can we can take one practical example like fusible plug is used in the boiler so same kind of fusible plug we are using in the pressure cooker as well here in pressure cooker we have a ct if the ct will not work properly if we not clean air properly then it will be jam so when the ct will not work and the steam get generated more inside the pressure cooker so what is the work of what is the main thing in the pressure cooker we need to re release that steam and <coughs> so we need to release that steam from the pressure cooker so sometimes what happen if the ct will be jam at the top most position we have a black color valve so that made of the <coughs> metal gun metal and if we have a higher temperature then if ct will not get up the valve will melted out if the valve is melted out there we can find the hole and from that hole the steam gets out from the pressure cooker to atmosphere so what happened what happened the boiler the, the pressure cooker net got explode or we can not consider not get the overheating so it will one kind of safety 
so we can consider that it is one kind of safety valve as well now the working of the fusible plug in normal uh, working condition the upper surface of fusible plug is covered by the water so which keeps the temperature of the plug below the melting point so why other other end of the plug is exposed to the fire of hot, hot gases the low melting temperature lead and tin does not melt till the upper surface of plug is submerged in the water but in case of water level boiler falls below the danger level the fusible plug is uncovered by the water and it gets exposed by to the steam and the steam will occupy the space so what happened the temperature of steam is high so the over, due to the overheat the plug and fusible matter having low melting point which melt quickly so the, the both the more gun metal well melted so the third plug drops down and the second hollow gun become open and due to that the steam rush out inside the combustion chamber or inside the furnace and the combustion will stop the put out the fire so if combustion is stop or put out the fire then the whole generation of hot flue gases are stopped and due to the hot flue gases generation stop our uh bo boiler temp overall boiler temperature gets down and our boiler is not get into the overheated or boiler not get the exploded in the explosion now we talk about the safety valve safety valve is also the consider is the last mounting but it is a very much important in the boiler we have a different types of safety valve but we general, we uh, here we conclude the general function of the safety valve so safety valve are located on the top of the boiler they guard to boiler against the excessive high temperature of steam in the boiler drum so if the pressure of if the pressure of the steam in the boiler drum exceed the working pressure that means if i have a boiler and the working pressure range is 70 bar to 100 bar then there is a no problem but if the boiler pressure is exceeds the above the 100 bar or 100 bar then it will go in danger so if the pressure of steam in the boiler drum exceeds the working pressure then the safety valve allow the blow of the excess of steam or excess quantity of the steam to the atmosphere to save the boiler from the overheating and explosion thus the pressure of steam in the drum falls down and the escape of the steam make an audio noise to warm the boiler now these are the four safety valve which we are using the boiler so there are four but out of four there is a certain limitation then we go to the next one we go to the next one so in the dead weight safety valve we discuss the detail second one is the lever loaded safety valve third one is the spring loaded safety valve and fourth one is the high steam low water safety valve in the fourth one we are getting the two types of safety if the temperature steam the pressure is high then also the safety valve will get uh, uh, on or we can get uh, operated and if the low water water level indicate indicates the water level is no below the normal water level then also the safety valve gets operated first we discuss about the dead weight safety valve here you can see the dead weight safety valve here is a structure is look like the city of the pressure cooker what happen here we need to add the two side the weight dead weight how much amount of how many weight we have to place in the both side the we have to create the downward pressure what happen we have to create the downward pressure is 60 bar then we have to put that 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 many amount of uh, dead weight if the downward to upward pressure is 60 bar then the valve will not get operated the that these are the certain parts of the safety valve this is the discharge casing weights valve cover vertical steel pipe flange and main is the dead weight these are the dead weights so we if we if i put a two to here we need to put two to here for the equilibrium otherwise it will get unbalanced due to balance we have to put both side now we talk about the construction 
it consists of the wall v is placed upon a wall sheet which is fixed upon a long vertical pipe having a flange at the bottom from fixing at the top of the boiler so the weight carrier d suspended from the top of the wall which carries the cast ring ci ring as shown in figure so the total weight must be sufficient to keep the wall on its seat against the normal working pressure if the working pressure is 60 then we need to maintain from the top part to upward to downward is 60 and we may have to maintain the 60 bar pressure working pressure then we need to put the dead weight from the both side now working when the steam pressure exceeds the normal limit of the boiler then what happened this high pressure steam create the upward force and downward force is limited to 60 bar or limited to working pressure then what happened if outward, uh, upward force is fixed uh, sorry downward force is fixed that is the working pressure but upward force is not fixed so what happened when the downward and upward force is equal if during working pressure wall will not lift but what happened if the working pressure downward working pressure is fixed but upward working pressure is not fixed if we generate the axis the working pressure then what happened the pressure gets increased then the valve is lifted and remaining excess amount of seed will escape from the pipe to the atmosphere or outside so the construction of this wall is simple it gives the satisfactory operation for low pressure and stationary boiler it is not suitable for the moving boiler because when we we, we will move from one place to another place at that time what happened the balancing will get disturbed if the balancing will get disturbed then what happened the working pressure which we have fixed downward side it will be changed so what happened if the working pressure is 60 but when we move further the valve will get deflected valve will get deflected when what happened the upward uh, downward pressure will get deflected if the uh, steam are in the working pressure then also the valve will lifted and it goes outside the atmosphere so it is not suitable for the moving boiler as the force on the weight should always work vertically downward so it is not suitable for the high pressure boiler because the steam gets become the large or the construction of of the the uh, valve is get large but if we if we are large high pressure that means we have a 150 160 bar then we have to put the that much amount of uh, dead weight from the both sides so the construction and working uh, construction get little bulky now second one is the lever loaded safety valve lever loaded safety valve here you can see the weights in previous one what we are we are doing we are putting the weight on the both the side but we are using here in the single weight so the cons there is there are two kinds of issues in the dead weight safety valve first one is the not used for the movable and second issue is for the weight if we have a high pressure boiler then we have to put the more weights so in the lever loaded safety valve what we can do we can do use the only one weight at the end here is the valve seat here is the we can putting the weight we can uh, set the downward pressure uh, it limit the working pressure but if working pressure is 60 or 70 or 100 or 150 but the pressure is exists the working pressure that means if we have a 150 bar but it pressure is created 160 155 bar more than the working pressure then what happened it goes the upward direction and the pre accept the pressure on this of downward to upward direction so the lever gets lifted and the lever get lifted after lifted here is the steam gets outward in the atmosphere escape the atmosphere then uh, if the working pressure from upward to downward and downward to upward is same then again the valve or lever will place uh, its original space so the valve rest over the gun metal sheet which is fixed to the mounting block <coughs> the mounting block is fixed upon the boiler so one end of the lever is hinged with the other end of the lever is with the carries the weight as shown in figure the thrust of the lever with the weight is transmitted to the valve by a sort of strut so the position and amount of weight w x decided the safe pressure limit or we can consider the working pressure limit 
now we talk about the working of the lever loaded safety valve when the pressure exceed the normal limit and the vertical force on the valve is become higher than the downward thrust on the valve due to the weight w on a lever so what happened the valve is lifted from its seat and it weight which is weight and the excess steam will get comes out from the boiler to the atmosphere and this safety valve used only the stationary boiler here also we are not using this valve in the movable boiler if we are using the movable boiler then what happen the movement of this weight is slightly more and due to the lifting the valve, lifting the weight or the movement in the weight what happen the whatever we amount of downward pressure is set by the safe limit it get disturbed and it get disturbed the valve is lifted within the working pressure as well so this is the very most serious uh, issue in the lever loaded safety valve as well we have a two issue in the lever loaded safety valve out of this two one is resolved in the lever loaded safety valve now we talk about the spring loaded safety valve so we remove the weight because the weight will get deflected and will will disturb the working pressure safe pressure so what we have do we have done the can you convert the weight into the spring so here you can see the uh, trans transfer diagram or you can see, here you can see the we are using the spring in place of weight so what happened when the we have, the stiffness of the spring is same as the working pressure value of the working pressure the spring is not expand when the pressure is within the working pressure or safe pressure when the pressure range is increases or existing from the working pressure the spring get expanded and if the spring get expanded the lever gets upward direction if the lever gets upward direction these two valves are open and if the two valves are open the excess amount of steam gets outside in the atmosphere and again the level or again the value of pressure is in the working pressure range then the spring gets its original position and that two valves got closed in the closed one so the function is the there is a various types of spring loaded safety valve used on the different boiler now onwards the spring loaded safety valve is most important part in the boiler and latest boiler all the boiler are using as a safety valve is a spring loaded safety valve so the in the construction it consists of a cast iron body having two bunch of pipes two separate valves are you placed over the valve sheet as shown in figure a lever is placed over the valve by means of two pivots the lever is held tight its proper position by means of this spring and one end of this spring is connected with the lever and other end of this spring is connected with the body of the valve so the valve is kept on its seat with the help of swing force now working of the spring loaded safety valve so in the normal condition the downward force due to the spring is higher than the upward force applied by the steam so the valve is remain in closed due to the spring force when the steam pressure exceed this normal limit Uh, then the upward force is value is more compared to out downward force so due to the steam pressure become higher than the downward force due to the spring thus the valve are lifted from their seats opening the passage and the steam get released out the out of the boiler from the atmosphere to the atmosphere and again we can consider the the pressure get inside uh, below the safe limit then what happen below the safe limit working pressure then automatically that spring gets take the original shape original position and the valve will remain closed condition now la today's uh, last topic and last safety valve that is called high steam low water safety valve so this valve is operated during two issues one is the high steam if the steam pressure gets high then uh, then also it uh, provide the safety and the water level is all decreasing inside the boiler then also it provide the safety to the boiler so here you can see i will show you this figure here you can see 
this is the float what is the function of float 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 is connected to the upper surface of the water if the water gets down the water level gets down then the float is also go get down to touch the water surface if the water surface goes down water level is goes down the float is also goes down if float is also goes down the this lever get in this direction turn in this direction downward direction so this lever gets turn in this direction then what happen the, the this pivot or fulcrum is get uh, 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 apply the force on the upper direction if this lever goes down then turn in this direction then the then the pointer is provide the force in upward direction if the force provided to the wall high steam wall in the upward direction then the wall is lifted and if the wall is lifted then the excess amount of steam is tra transfer to from the boiler to the atmosphere and it will escape the boiler so the our boy our boiler will not get damage or may not get convert in it gets into the uh, uh explosion or we can consider the overheating second one is the if the pressure is high uh, above the uh, safe limit or we can consider above the working pressure then what happened it's it, it work as a simply here you can see this is a lever loaded safety wall construction same already discussed in the second one safety wall is the lever loaded safety wall uh, how the lever loaded safety wall will work same kind of working will work here by here because it is a similar case of the shift uh, lever loaded safety wall here we just added one safety for the low water safety if the water level goes down then this float goes down if float goes down this fulcrum will goes this in turn into this direction if fulcrum is turn into this direction the force will apply on this wall if the force is apply on this wall the wall will open and if the valve will open then the steam get escape from inside to outside from to the atmosphere from the boiler to the atmosphere same function for the high steam height if the pressure gets high here you can put the weight then if we put the weight then it, it restrict the safe limit if the pressure goes excess or goes the above the safe limit the, the this lever is lifted and if the lever is lifted from this here the steam will get escape to the atmosphere from the boiler to the atmosphere and our boiler will remain safe so all these kinds of safety wall or the with here we uh, concluded our lecture in this lecture today we discuss about the difference between mounting and accessory first second one we discuss about the various mountings we have a total seven types of mountings already we discussed the first one we discussed the water level indicator then second we discuss second we discussed the steam stop valve we discussed the steam stop valve we discussed about the fluid check valve we discussed about the blow off cork we discussed about the fusible plug we discussed about the safety valve so these are the seven types of mount mounting which we discuss during this lecture in the next subsequent lecture of the steam boiler chapter in the next lecture we discuss about the various accessories of the boiler so we already discuss the basics of the boiler in one lecture we already di discuss the various mountings in this lecture and we discuss about the accessories part in the next subsequent lecture and after the next lecture we discuss about the various kinds of boiler like kosher and boiler back of wheel cock boiler and so on so friends to students today we conclude our lecture here if you have any kind of doubt you can contact me you can directly reach out to me you can message me or you can call me anytime i will surely help you uh, to solve your doubts thank you thank you so much for listening thank you so much we will we will meet for the accessories part in the next lecture thank you